How aware of gravity are arthropods? This may seem like a stupid question, since insects specifically fly so as to fight gravity, but recent research has pointed to the fact that insects require quite a bit of light input in order to orient themselves properly while flying, because the effects of gravity are difficult to sense for such small bodies flapping around so quickly. But what about spiders? What we know about spiders is that they can innately sense gravity, similar to geotropism in plants, who always know which way is down so as to orient their roots correctly. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Please like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. Or you can buy me a coffee. I'm a hopeless caffeine addict and I do most of this recording in the middle of the night. In 2021, the paper Spiders in Space was published, recounting the research done on the International Space Station, trying to clearly show the effects of gravity on spider behavior. Spiders can sense gravity, and we've known that for a while, and it influences their ability to build webs and where they put the central hub of the web. And the central hub is where the spiders hang out while waiting for prey to show up. In most orb weaver spider webs, the hub is positioned in such a way that the main capture area where the prey is most likely to hit sits below the hub. And this is so that the spiders can run down because they run down faster than they can run up, which is also why they preferentially face down like you see here, because it's similar to us running downhill. It's just easier and you can do it faster. Researchers wanted to know what the effects of increased or decreased gravity would be on the spider's ability to build a web, especially a coherent web and not just random strings of silk. Increasing the effects of gravity is relatively straightforward. You can uh, just kind of glue little weights onto the spider to make it heavier as a proxy for what higher gravity would be, or you can put the spider in a centrifuge and attempt to get it or coax it to build a web under those conditions. And it seemed that increasing the gravity on the spider or these proxies for increased gravity caused the spiders to build more asymmetrical webs. Although this effect dissipated over time, maybe because the spider was getting used to the increased gravity. Reducing gravity, however, is a little more difficult. The only thing that you can really do on earth would be something like rotating the web consistently, which was tried and all it seems to do is severely disorient the spider. So if you want to truly get the effects of reduced gravity, you have to send the spiders to space, which is exactly what happened. And this has been going on for quite some time. It started in 1973. Spiders were sent to space to observe web building, and the results were unfortunately inconclusive, uh, largely due to poor data capture. So this is one photo from the event um, and both of these are in this paper that I will link in the description. Um, unfortunately, they didn't take enough photographs and the photographs weren't of high enough quality. Uh, so it was very, very poorly done, unfortunately. But it did seem that there were variations in the web structure. There did seem to be some more asymmetries showing up under these uh, low gravity conditions. Although because there were so few photographs taken, uh, it's hard to know. So in 2008, orb weaver spiders were sent uh, to the International Space, uh, Space Station, but with a, ba a better data collection plan. And part of this was because these orb weavers build very predictable webs. The spiders were very disoriented for the first five days, and they would spin random silk instead of spinning a web. It was just shooting silk all over the cage. By day six, however, they had figured out how to construct a web, and in total, eight webs were built. All of them were irregular, but the observations had to stop because everything ended up getting clogged up with dead flies. So in 2011, this was finally repeated uh, for our most uh, conclusive results. And in this 2011 study, Trichonophalia spiders, uh, generally the hub of the web is at the top, and all of the uh, catchment area is below. So at the very, very top of the web should be a capture area. This time, luckily, the webs were built within the first 48 hours, and then the spiders rebuilt the webs regularly uh, after that. 
Uh, and by that, I mean in regular intervals after that. In the experiment, two Trichonephila clavipes spiders were sent to the space station and two were kept on Earth as controls. And the webs were photographed every five minutes. So there's been plenty of data collection on, on this. The Trichonephila spiders naturally build these asymmetrical webs. And not only that, the they always face downward while on Earth. In space, most but not all of the webs were symmetric. However, webs built when the lights were turned on ended up coming out asymmetrical in the much more natural state with the hub situated at the top of the web. So in this photograph here, you can see two things, two things of importance. One, there it's a mostly symmetrical web. The hub is in the center and the spider is not actually facing down. It's facing kind of towards the side. So this is one symmetrical web built in low gravity. Again, in a second web, you see uh, mostly a symmetrical web, although it's a little more chaotic. And this time the spider is facing down. In another zero gravity situation, the spider is correctly oriented, but the web is just absolute chaos. There's not even a clear hub anymore. And then finally, if you look at what a control specimen on Earth looks like, this is what it's supposed to look like. You have an asymmetrical hub at the top of the web with the catchment area primarily situated below and the spider facing downward. So considering that this is the control, you can see how chaotic and, a and uh, symmetrical a lot of these webs in space become. Spiders tend to show random orientations when the lights are off. But when the lights are on, the orientation becomes less random. Under normal gravity and regardless of light, the spiders should be facing downward. And you can see this here in this figure. Uh, these are the effects of gravity and light on the orientation of spiders. So you can see under zero gravity, the orientation with the light off is totally random but with the light on, they are more often correctly oriented. Whereas on Earth and under normal gravity, the light has no effect and you get kind of identical orientations always facing downward amongst the spiders. Gravity seems to be the primary impactor on web and spider orientation, but the direction of light can serve as an orientation guide for spiders during web building and correct positioning on the hub. It seems that like with insects, the spiders know to associate light with the sky and thus up. 